When we used to do Sankirtan years ago, we'd, we'd put on a whole Santa Claus suit, and we'd, we'd go out and distribute <laughs> in Santa Claus suits, yeah. But after a while, people didn't like it because they thought we were blaspheming Santa Claus. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to stop. <laughs> Jayur Hatham Madhava Kunjavi Hari Hayam Jayur Hatham Madhava Kunjavi Hari Hayam Edhaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivar Dhaan Edhaya Gopi Janavallabha Edhaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivar Dhaan Edhaya Gopi Janavallabha Yasodhanandana Brajadhyanandhyanaya Yasodhanandana Brajadhyanandhyanaya Jammunathirahavana Chahariyavana Jammun Thira Havan Chahari Amun Thira Adhyayur Adham Adhavam Kunjabhi Hare Kunjabhi Hare Adhyayur Adham Madhavam Kunjavi Hare Ayam Vim Gunjavi Adhya Gopi Janavallabham Girivaradham Hare Ayam Giri Adhaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivaradha Hare Hare Giri Yasodhanandhanna Bhajajanandhanna Yasodhanandhanna Bhajajana Hanjana Jamuna Tira Havana Chaha Jamuna Tira Jamuna Tira Havana Chaha Jamuna And Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hayam Kunjabi And Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hayam Or Bhimanandi Hari 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 Hari
Jayam Vishnupad Paramahans Parivaja Kacharya Astotara Sutta Sri Sriman His Divang Raisa Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Raj Granta Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Gaur Primarande All glories to the assembled devotees Glories to the assembled devotees Glories to Guru and Garanga Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Christmas Garland it's a Christmas garland. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Red, green, and, well, it's got some yellow, but. If it was white, it was better, but red and green are there. Christmas colors. When it was like, when I was a little kid, the night before Christmas, we would say, oh, Santa Claus is coming. And then we'd make some cookies, right? And then we leave him some hot tea and some cookies so when he comes in, he can relax. And then he would leave us all these nice little gifts, right? So nice, right? Christmas was real in those days. This day, I don't know what, they, what they're doing anymore. <laughs> it's all commercialized now. You see, you had, sometimes they abbreviate Christmas, and they put X-M-A-S. You've seen that? That means they crossed out Christ and put out Xmas. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it means. No more Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they tell you how much you know, demons they take over and destroy everything. Christmas was fun when I was a kid. We'd always think, oh, let's have some snow. <laughs> and then we'd go. Now what do you do? You just, you know, you eat some turkey and then you get drunk and that's it. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> we don't eat turkey. The devotees used to make uh, what they call vegetarian turkey, but... That didn't go over so good. <laughs> it's been actually the appearance day of Lord Jesus Christ is in the month of August, not in December. December was chosen because nobody knew. And December twenty fifth is a pagan holiday. It's a pagan holiday. And so they chose that day just to find a particular day to put this celebration on. But it's understood he appeared in August, right around John Mostomy. <laughs> yeah. All the good guys appear in August. <laughs> Balaram and <laughs> Krishna, sometimes even Radharani sneaks in there, but <laughs> she's mostly September. Yeah, so. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Third. Eighth canto, fifteenth chapter, verse number thirty-three. Devasyata niline suhum. Bali varochana purim. Devadarnim adhishtaya. Vasuninye jagatrayam. Devasyata nili nesu Bali virochana purim Devadanim adhishtaya Varsham ninye jagatrayam Devasyata nili nesu Bali virochana purim Devadanim nidishtaya 
Pasham Ninye Jagatrayam. Deveshu, all the demigods, Ata, in this way, Nilin Nesu, when they disappeared, Bali, Bali Maharaj, Virochana, the son of Virochana, Purim, the heavenly kingdom, Devadanim, the residence of the demigods, Adishtaya, taking possession of, Vasham, under control, Ninye, brought, Jagatrayam, the three worlds. Okay. So, when the demigods had disappeared, Bali Maharaj, the son of Virochan entered the heavenly kingdom and from there he brought the three worlds under his control. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravari Bacchari Nivasai Sasuni Vari Basariya Deza Tharne Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitya Narasya Dvati Gadara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare We had too much brandy last night was so we are suffering from New Year's Eve party, <laughs> Christmas, yeah, no, no, Christmas party. Yeah. It was a brandy in a form of a cookie, I saw that, that's all it was. <laughs> Intoxicating cookie. <laughs> Sometimes that happens, get intoxicated on cookies. <laughs> if, if Marco makes cookies, then careful. <laughs> He'll start having ecstasy and jumping all around. <laughs> well, we, every day, why not just Sunday? <laughs> so, yeah, so um, today is uh, the appearance day of Lord Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes I Every year I usually speak a little bit about him. Prabhupada used to call him Lord Jesus Christ. He said, Prabhupada said, he is our guru in one lecture. Prabhupada gave a lot of credit to Lord Jesus Christ and explained that actually he was a Shaktavesh avatar sent by the Lord to do the work 
of spreading God consciousness throughout the world. And he performed the ultimate sacrifice, apparently. Of course, there's controversy over that, whether he actually was killed or not on the cross. The Christians, of course, want to believe that. But the Vaishnavas say that actually, that the pure devotee of God can never be killed by the demons. So, Prabhupada said, it, or others said, that he actually had mystic power and went into samadhi and appeared to have uh, left his body. And that's when they say he, three days later he rose from the dead. But actually he was never dead. He was just into a deep state of samadhi. Like that. And then later on he went to Kashmir. And that's been proven. There's a place called the Shrin of Kash, Shroud of Kashmir. Um, there, and then they have the burial place of Lord Jesus Christ where he actually actually did leave the body in a place called Kashmir, which is, was part of India at the time. Christ spent a lot of time in India. He actually went to Jagannath Puri, and he actually associated with the priests there. And um, Prabhupada actually said, because of um, Christ, uh, associated with the priest in Jagannath Puri that um, the disciples of Christ have come to me <laughs> as my disciples. <laughs> now the followers of Christ, because most of us were all Christians. Prabhupada said most of my disciples were either Christians or Jewish. And of course the Jews also honor and worship Christ too. So, um, and then Prabhupada said, that was the reason for Rathayatra. Rathayatra was that Lord Jagannath, who was in Jagannath Puri, wanted to reciprocate with his pure devotee, Lord Jesus Christ. So he came to the Western world, just as Christ came to the Eastern world to visit Lord Jesus. I mean, to, to visit Lord to Jagannath Puri. So it's interesting. These are little innuendos of how actually Lord Christ actually facilitated the Jagannath Rathayatra program because Jagannath wanted to reciprocate the devotion of his pure devotee. Who is Christ? And there is one scripture called the Bhavishya Purana. I failed to study for this class, but tomorrow and during the Sunday feast I'll give a more detailed explanation. But there is a Purana called the Bhavishya Purana, which is p full of prophecy. In that, it, it, it actually explains and describes this person who is known as Jesus Christ. He appeared in a place called Ladakh in Tibet. <laughs> and his name was Isha, <laughs> I-S-A. That was his original name, Isha. Uh, of course, that's also a Sanskrit name too, Isha. It's a name, and actually Isha means Lord in the Sanskrit terminology, but that was the name of Christ. And he preached in that area for many years, and he traveled all around. It's explained in one particular book, and Prabhupada actually quotes the book, that while Lord Christ went to different places around the world. He went to Egypt, he went to many of the Middle East countries and many other places. He not only preached in Jerusalem, but he traveled and preached because we don't hear anything about the history of Lord Jesus Christ until he actually comes to Jerusalem, which is when he's 32 years old. But before that, what did he do? Well, that, that knowledge is pretty much not so much known, but it is available. Uh, there's a whole book describing his uh, travels in different places and preaching uh, God conscious in them. But Christ's preaching was quite simple, but it's very powerful, some of the points he made. He said, if you want to have to, if you want to love God, you have to love your brother. He says, there's no question of loving God without loving your brother. And he taught that as a principle that love has to be there amongst the living entities 
Otherwise, there's no question of loving the supreme source of all the living entities. He says you can't hate your brother and st still love your father, because your brother, your father loves your brother also. <laughs> and that was some of the powerful teachings of Christ. He said, put your hand on the plow and don't look back. <laughs> Put your hand on the plow, plowshare, like that, and don't look back. That means once you come to spiritual life, don't look back towards your material life again. That's past, that's gone. Just, you know, forget that. Keep your mind focused on the goal of life, like that. He said, take the take the log out of your own eye before you take the splinter out of the eye of your brother. In other words, take get rid of your own faults instead of trying to pick the faults of others. <laughs> that he was saying. So he, his point was that find fault. If you want to find fault, then do that with yourself rather than try to find fault with others. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also makes that a, a very essential point in his teachings that. He said, my mercy is fully available for those who chant the holy names of the Lord and become a dosha darshi. <laughs> a, a dosha, dosha means faults and a dosha means without faults. And darshi means to see. So those who do not see the faults of others, they plus they chant the holy names of the Lord, they can achieve the, the full mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. So he makes that one of his main principles, not finding fault with others. And Christ was very strong on that also. He taught that principle very strong, to love your brother just as much as you love the Lord, even more so. So, um, yeah, his teachings were very basic. There wasn't a lot of... Uh, emphasis on the higher mellows of spirituality. Although in some Christian scriptures, in the Song of Solomon, in the Song of Solomon there is uh, talk about a conjugal relationship with the Lord. <laughs> and that's in one part of the, in the Bible, there is a little talk about having conjugal relationships with the Lord. And those who, who are females who join the uh, join the uh, convent, they also take a vow. There was one particular court case in our society where the Christians had brought us to court, America, <laughs> for you know saying that Krishna is God. And he has 16,108 wives. <laughs> and they say, what kind of God is this? <laughs> you know, this is just some caricature, some mythological program. They were finding fault. And they made a court case out of it. They wanted to destroy our movement. This was, in, I believe, in Oregon, in America. So some of the nuns came to court also. And uh, we had a good lawyer. <laughs> he was sharp. <laughs> he was trying to defend us. So at one point, um, you know, they, the argument was God has so many wives, and he's just, you know, he's just a sensual person trying to enjoy with others. So our lawyer at one point turned to the nuns and said to the judge, can I ask the nuns a question? And the judge gave permission. And he said, okay, isn't it true that when you take your vow of nunnery, you vow to be the bride of Christ? Jai Sri Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasiddhi Gaur Vaktarinda so he asked him, when you take your vow of nunnery, do you agree to become the, don't you agree in your vows to become the bride of Christ? So Christ has so many wives, <laughs> more than Krishna. <laughs> 
So when the judge heard that, he ruled in our favor and they threw out the case. <laughs> Yeah, because the nuns, they, they vow that they will be the bride of Christ. And that is their... I don't know if, if it's in all the orders of Christianity, but some of the main orders of Christianity, that is the vow. Right? Uh, yeah. C correct? Yeah, yeah. In Italy, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and Christ preached very heavily. Uh, he challenged the status quo. He went right against what they were saying. Because there was a group of people, we call it in today's society, we call them smart Brahmanas. But in those days, they were called Pharisees. The Pharisees were using the temples for making money. So they would set up lotteries in the temples. Even now in today's society, you'll see that. That happens in churches sometimes. And uh, they were using uh, the temples for economic gain, personal economic gains. So Christ challenged that. And one time he even came in in a very angry mood and threw the tables up in the air and just became really angry and just pushed everything out. So he was, he was a radical. <laughs> He was, he was a strong preacher. Yeah, he appeared, he was, his birth was glorious, of course. He was a divine birth, just like we read in Krishna, when Krishna appeared, Krishna appeared in the divine birth, there was no, what we say, um, contact between wife and husband. There was just the divinity of the Lord appears into the mind of the Father and then it's transferred to the mind of the mother, and then it goes into the womb of the mother, and the child is there. <laughs> it's not all this messy stuff that we get into, right? <laughs> and then there's abortion, pregnancy, and so many other things. And, <laughs> and uh, so Christ's birth is also divine. <laughs> And it says that there were three wise men coming from the east to bring, so the east it was actually India. <laughs> so there's a lot of connection between India and Christ, and Christ, although the Christians don't really want to acknowledge that so much. Anyway, we have our history, and Prabhupada has given a lot of in interesting information. But the main thing is important is his teachings. He uh, was very strong about the, what we say um, pretentiousness, speaking one thing and uh, meaning something different. Um, he also, there is a little indication of Christ gave some indication of reincarnation. When someone said, are you, John the Baptist, come again? Because <laughs> John the Baptist also was a great follower of Christ, but he had to disappear. And then Christ, so, and then also one person said to, to, to Christ, or I think it was John the Baptist or Christ, I can't remember. There was a boy that was deformed, born deformed. So someone said, who has sinned? Is it he who has sinned or has his parents sinned? Indicating the deformed birth. Which means that there, if, if, if he has sinned, that means there's something in, that he was there in a previous life that created a sin which caused him to be like he is, like that. So there are certain indications in Christian scriptures to indicate reincarnations. There's a few like that. In fact, we know from, um, uh, what was it, what was his name? King, it was the Council of Nicaea in 555 AD, 555 AD. King Justinian, okay, King Justinian. And his wife, 
it was actually his wife, she thought this idea of reincarnation, it was already followed by the Christians, at least for many hundreds of years. She thought it was not a very good idea, it would make people become lazy in their spiritual life, because if you get more than one life, then you'll just, you know, take it easy. Well, if I don't finish in this life, I can get another life. So she thought to make people more serious in their following of Christianity, then we should take this whole idea of re reincarnation out. And they did, they took it out of the scriptures like that. And then that was a rule, and King Justinian made it a law in the kingdom. And then Christianity, that was, was thrown out of the scriptures. That's why the Christians don't follow it today, because it, it's continued in that way. But actually it's there. I remember I, one time I gave a lecture in one college, one professor. He was really, a, he was a Christian professor, and he was really, really into Christian, into reincarnation. So he wanted to hear from me. You have to go? You're going? Kitchen. Oh, for service? Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. Uh, so they they brought two or three philosoph philosophy classes together to hear by this, and they the teacher kept asking me about reincarnation. He was interested, so I explained from our scriptures. You know, never was the time that I did not exist. You know, you know all these kings, nor in the future said anyone ceased to be. And uh, uh, when it, as a Embodied soul travels from boyhood to youthhood to old age. Similarly, the soul travels into another body at death. The self-realized soul is not bewildered by such a change. I was quoting Bhagavad Gita a lot. And it went over pretty good. Everybody liked it. So I thought, okay, good. And it was like, it was a symposium. And in other words, they took two or three philosophy classes and put them all together for for the presentation. So there was like more than hundreds of students. So after class, I was walking out to my car. I was all by myself. I used to travel and go to colleges and preach. So I went out to, I went, and then one, one of the students who was in the class, he was a little elderly, he came up and he was angry as anything. Whoa. He was really angry, and he really laid into me. <laughs> How can you say you come back at another birth? What is this? This, uh, this is all against religion. This is heresy. <laughs> he was really strong, and he was just like chastising me <laughs> for speaking about reincarnation. So I was trying to be as polite as I could, but of course I wanted to get out of there also at the same time. <laughs> And I just, you know, I just said, well, it's there. <laughs> it's in your scripture, too. And it made him even more angry, so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to convince him. And then he just became so angry, he just left. <laughs> so, you know, so there's people who are, they, they just don't have any understanding that we are not these bodies, we are the soul in the body. So when we leave the body, and then the soul according to its activities and consciousness divide desires and activities in this. You get a, you get a particular body according to. That makes sense, that's practical. And even nowadays, you know, reincarnation is being accepted all around the world. There's one Christian uh, scholar in one university, I think he's in University of Virginia. He's written a book, and he, his book is based on documented cases of reincarnation around the world. Because children remember their previous birth, many children, when they're about three or four years old, five years old. A lot of times they can speak about things in the past that has nothing to do with their previous, with their life in this, this birth. 
So um, when you get older, you kind of have a tendency to forget that because your mind becomes crowded with all these other things. When you're young, the mind is still somewhat free from all of that. So they remember. And there's a group of Christians, they call themselves the Druze. They're right near Israel. <laughs> In fact, they're part of Israel. Uh, when we went preaching in the area of the Druze, when they uh, saw our books, they bought our books like crazy. <laughs> it's a little colony of Christians, and uh, they really believe in reincarnation. I mean, they make that their center, center of their preaching. And when they saw Prabhupada's books, wow, this is what we were looking for. We couldn't find it in our scriptures. <laughs> And they were buying it. There's a whole book on it, written by one devotee who was preaching it then. It's about, it's called The Druze. I have the book in my library. And I also have a few papers written by devotees describing the events of how they were buying our books like crazy. Because, you know, all our books talk about, you know, many lives, not just one life. Like that. But it actually, their, that philosophy by that queen the wife of King Dasjanian is wrong because actually when you understand that you have more than one life, you become more serious in this life, not more lackadaisical. Because then again, if you don't prepare for your next life, you don't know what you're going to be. Right? So you think, well, if I come back again, I could come back as a, you know, a cockroach or, or you know, I could come back and... Well, maybe I can come back in the temple as a, a mouse or something. <laughs> At least I can be able to get some prashadam. <laughs> so, yeah, reincarnation actually facilitates, the principle of reincarnation facilitates more seriousness in one's efforts in spiritual life. And that doesn't take away from that. Um, there's so much to the life of Christ, and I left all my notes and all my material at, at the where I stay, and I forgot to, I didn't read any of it, so it's been years since I have to see it. So tomorrow for the Sunday feast, I'll speak more in depth about Lord Jesus Christ, because I think he's interesting, and it's important to, to, to understand his position in relationship to us, because it is very important. He's not just one saint within another tradition. He is actually an empowered incarnation of the Lord to do the work of the Lord by spreading, Christian, by spreading God consciousness. And you look how successful he is. But what was it, what's the success of Christianity? That the Christians were really willing to die for what they believed in. There's a book it was written in 1886 called Fox's Books of Martyrs, what describes those who are martyred. In other words, they gave their life rather than give up their, their Christianity. And Prabhupada said, our movement will become successful and, and uh, go everywhere around the world when we have the quality of devotees that are willing to give their lives for the, for the sake of preaching to the conditioned souls. He said that. That's what it takes to really spread the movement. Only when devotees come to that level of Krishna consciousness that it doesn't matter, we have to preach Krishna consciousness. It, it doesn't matter, even if they kill me, still we, the preaching should not stop. <laughs> and they will try to kill us. Not yet, but it's coming. <laughs> as, uh, as time goes on, the demons are, are got their plans to eliminate all of religion, so hang on. <laughs> it may not happen in our lifetime, but uh, because this is a threat to the entire demonic world, this Krishna conscious movement. And the demons are very prominent right now, more so. But Christ wasn't afraid. When Christ, in his last day, he was living at the olive grove. And then in Gethsemane, was it Gethsemane, I think, in the olive grove. 
And he was praying to the Lord, my dear Lord, you know. And he was praying very deeply. And at one time he, he called out to the Lord, my dear Lord, you have given me a bitter cup to drink from. He wanted to know, he knew that if he stayed, he could have left and saved his own life, but he didn't, he stayed. And he knew if he stayed one more day, they were gonna come and crucify him. But he understood that was the Lord's plan for him, and therefore he prayed, my dear Lord, you've given me a very bitter cup to drink from. But he accepted it, and therefore sacrificed, well, at least, he, you know, he became crucified, he was crucified, he was tortured quite heavily. Um, there was one, Christ was crucified along with two other persons, one on the right and one on the left. Christ was in the middle. And one of them, when he was being crucified, he also turned to Christ and said, this is the result of your preaching. <laughs> you know? And the other person on the other side started chastising that person for criticizing Christ and saying that actually he is, he, what he has done is he's, he's given his life for the benefit of others. So actually he is faultless. <laughs> so there was a debate between those two other persons. Both were thieves. But one to stood up for Christ and one cr criticized him like that. So, um, yeah. So we have a lot to learn, many of the moral principles. Um, Christ said, if you live in a house of glass, don't throw stones. If your house is made of glass, don't throw stones, <laughs> because you break your house. <laughs> so what he meant was, uh, you know, get your own house together before you try to get someone else's house together, like that. Very good moral instructions. And he, and the Ten Commandments, of course, that came later. Well, that came actually before Christ. The Ten Commandments became before Christ. That was um, who was that? Uh, huh? Can't hear you. Moses, Moses right? Moses, Moses. Yeah, yeah. But the first commandment is to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself for the love of God. So that second commandment is interesting because it connects to the first commandment. So they say that the second commandment means to preach Krishna consciousness. We say that. In other words, if you really love your brother, you'll give them your father. So we say, well, that's what it means in Christianity. That's what it really means. If you really have love for your brother, which the commandment says, then you'll give them your father. In other words, you'll help them become God conscious. That's, that's what that love means. It doesn't mean some anything else. It means to do good to others by giving them what they really look are looking for, a relationship with their father or Christ, like that, or, or God, like that, Krishna. <laughs> Interesting point. And the uh, fourth commandment, thou shalt not kill, means all life. <laughs> all life. Not just, uh, you know, they say, well, that means humans. But that got changed also. If you understand the Latin, it was meant, it was written in Latin. If you take the Latin word and you, you understand the meaning of the Latin word, it's kill, not murder. 
because they say it actually means murder, but no, it actually means all life. There's even Christians who have translated the Latin into the actual translation, which shows that the word is kill and not murder, like that. So it's interesting, anyway. So these Ten Commandments are not optional. <laughs> Uh, they, they actually, there are the foundation to morality and spirituality. Otherwise, they're there in our scriptures also, but in, spoken in different ways, like that. So today is a very, you know, holy day for the world in general. And it's to honor a pure devotee of the Lord, or we might say Shaktivesha avatar. Prabhupada says there are two, shak, two kinds of Shaktivesha avatars. One that is empowered by the Lord and comes to do the work of the mission of the Lord. And other is an, a, a jiva who becomes empowered by the Lord during their time on earth and then actually spreads God consciousness. Two kinds like that. Srila Prabhupada was the first one. He was an empowered uh, incarnation. He came to do the work like that. And he said, I am, I'm a follower of Jesus. I came to continue what, it's just like when, they, uh, when Prabhupada came to the United States, some, some Christians asked him, we have so many religions here, why have you come? <laughs> we have religion here. We don't need you. <laughs> Prabhupada said, I've come to teach you what you forgot. <laughs> yeah. Thou shall not kill means all life. <laughs> life is sacred because life is spiritual. And those who harm the body, they're not harming the soul, but they interfere with the soul's transgress, transmigration from one species to another. Just like if, you, if someone kills an insect, that particular insect, that soul and in that body of that insect has to come back in that same insect body again to finish out its term of for being in that particular body. When, it, when, when the different species finish out their term of existence in a particular body, they go to the ne next higher species and then gradually they come up till they get to the, you know, beasts and then finally the human beings. So when one kills a lower form of life that interferes with that natural transmigration from one body to another, and that soul is forced to come back into that same type of body again to live out their term of existence in that body. That's why it's sinful to kill all living entities, any living entities. It interferes with God's arrangements for them. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so uh, any questions, comments on anything? Yes, Marco. Mm -hmm. Marco. Okay. Okay. Mm. You know, when we sometimes we met Christians on the streets when we distribute books, in, and and one of their strongest argument is, I mean, I'm not arguing with them, but sometimes we speak, you know, and they say that Jesus said that He's the only way. You know, I am the the the, the, the way, truth, the light, the, the way. Light, no one way. comes to the Father yes. except through me. Yes, mm. that's the and that's the, the their argument. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, I heard his, he was one time a guest he, in, mm -hmm. Ta, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, yeah. he was a guest in one radio show in America, um, and I heard the, and one, one Christian called, and he quoted this, and Maharaj just said, interesting that this, uh, this particular thing that was quoted is written, is written in present tense, and he was right. directly quoting this, this, uh, that it's, Jesus didn't meant for all 
the eternity, but he meant right. for, for those people there. Yeah, I even have, I have the Latin. I have yeah. the, that's, yeah. that's the question. I, written, I was yeah. looking, but never found this. Yeah, it's in one little book booklet that we published about Christianity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it was at that time. But then again, we also give another interpretation that when he's saying, I am the truth, the light, and the way he's referring to his position as a guru. Hmm. So if you, um, you want to come to God, you have to come through guru. That's another hmm. understanding of that. That's closer to tattva. But in the first, what, Kri what Tamar Krishna Goswami said is correct. Yeah. yeah. His time was time was at that time. He was the uh, he was the Jagat Guru at the time. He was the enlightened person. To bring people back to God. Huh? Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. Nice point. Um, I have a question also with its connection to our Vaishnava etiquette, as we mentioned, as you mentioned that uh, Jesus. Um, taught mostly love your brother and then he'll show you if you love yeah. your brother i mean if you love, love your, your brother, brother you can love your father otherwise there's no question of loving the father um yeah this principle of um, respect and tolerance and every all the relationship we also have with Vaishnavas. how do you um or even when we are outside on book distribution, sometimes people are rude and they are um, is they're rude towards us, but we still be have to be kind. Yeah. So how how uh, also this um, saying they say love your enemy and show him mm -hmm. kindness. Love your enemy and show him kindness. Um, how do you? manage this how how can we well um, christ taught something that we don't exactly follow he said turn the other cheek yeah. 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 yeah but we don't follow that so much <laughs> we defeat them <laughs> in argument <laughs> so uh, we we don't become angry we we just uh, explain things According to Shastra, according to to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways. Religion means religion is one. There's only one religion. Religion means to love God, but there are faith paths, path of faith. So according to time, place, and circumstance, God sends a empowered person to teach religious principles and that becomes a faith. Yeah. yeah. So that's there. You know, so at one time Christ came and then we have Muhammad that came. So other enlightened persons come on behalf of the Lord to teach. And then there is a so called we call it they call it religion, but we call it faith path. Path of faith that builds around that. So religion is one, to love God and to follow the laws of God. Religion means to follow the laws of God. So if you follow the laws of God in Christianity, uh, Christianity, you are religious. You follow the laws of God in Islamic, you are religious. So it's not about, these. Are, they've made this wrong definition. They call it, it's, it's called sectarianism. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, party spirit and sectarianism is the number one enemy of true religious principles. That's from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Party spirit, my way is the only way. And you're simply made of the devil, right? <laughs> so. You have to be born again like us, born again Christians. We said, yes, you guys are born again and again and again <laughs> and again and again. <laughs> That's a little bit of a feisty response. but <laughs> So what 
you know, our tradition is, and our Shastras teach that ultimately God is one, truth is one, the path of God is one. But the saints are many, and they, they teach on different levels, even within our own tradition. Not every saint teaches the highest principles. And so, as Prabhupada said, Christianity is, uh, is, can bring one to love of God, but it's very simple. It doesn't go, it go into the higher mellows of, uh, of uh, tattva, such as, you know, the different rasas. Which are, you know, uh, and Christ didn't, he, because he also said, there's so much more I could teach you, but you're not ready to hear. He said that. There's more, yeah, right? He had more to say, but who is he preaching to? <laughs> he was preaching to people who were practically illiterate. They were very simple farmers and workers like that. Krishna was preaching to Arjun. <laughs> he was an intellectual. He, he was a, I mean, he was an ashatri, and he was, he he had complete knowledge. Krishna, Krishna was preaching to a very intelligent person when he spoke Bhagavad Gita. But Christ was preaching to very simple people, and they couldn't appreciate him, and therefore they tried to kill him, even his own followers. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Not all of them. So that's why Christ said, there's so much more I could, I could teach you, but you are not ready to hear. And Prabhupada said, if you follow Christ perfectly, you go to the planet where Christ is. Christ has a planet outside of the material worlds also. He has his own planet. And once you get there, then he teaches you the higher principles, and then you can go back to the spiritual world. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very high planet in the material world. Well, I think it's true. Yeah. Not sure exactly where, but some some people say it's a Vaikuntha planet, but I don't think so. It's it's more like the high, one of the highest planets in the material, because there are many universes in the material realm, not just this universe. There's so many universes. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this really interesting class. Um, <coughs> me. Um, during the course of the lecture, you mentioned that Lord Jesus Christ was born in Ladakh, in Tibet. Yeah. And now, all the while, we hear of Joseph and Mary traveling from Nazareth to Jerusalem and finding that little inn and there was no place and he was born in the manger and there are songs about that. So how do we reconcile this? Well, being born in a manger doesn't mean he wasn't born in Ladakh. You know. The geographical arra arrangements were different. You know, the country boundaries were also different at that time. But what we know as Tibet now in that area called Ladakh is that's been documented. I mean, really documented. There's one book, uh, Isha of Ladakh or something. I read it. I studied Christianity from the Krishna conscious perspective for many years. And, you know, you can find a lot of information mm. like that. So that's one. And Prabhupada also said, you know, mm -hmm. And the Bhavishya Purana also, mm -hmm. if you go to the Bhavishya Purana, and these, are, these Puranas go back, you know, millions of years, or thousands of years anyway. So in the Bhavishya Purana, it describes also. Yeah. I'll read to you the, the actual text tomorrow during the Sunday feast. Yeah. 
Okay. I think it's interesting that, uh, you know, just as Kamsa said... Well, but, but it's not so much important where he was born. Right. What's, uh, there's, there's Janma Stan and Karma Stan. Mm -hmm. Where he preached and what he said is more important than where he appeared or even where he disappeared. Because okay. we get into arguments over these things and it just makes things, loses the essence. The most important is what is his teachings, teachings. and how can we follow them? That's the most important thing. Right. No, and this is just some uh, sort of a realization or rather reflection that uh, just as Kamsa sent uh, Putana to kill all the little babies, this King Herod also sent an edict that all the children born within that certain time period, because he was warned that the Son of God is coming, he ordered that all the babies should be killed. Yeah, right, that's in there. That's in the Old Testament. So the persecution began even before the child was born. Yeah, similar. History repeats itself. Seth. <laughs> Thank you. History repeats itself. Yeah. I mean, Christ was quite amazing. I mean, he really empowered. Um, one devotee has done some research, and I have the information documented. And he's a Christian. He's a, an avowed Christian, but he's also connected with our tradition too. He does a lot of cross-reference. He, he actually says that Christ comes from the tattva of Lord Balaram, which is Guru Tattva. <laughs> and he's documented that, so. You know, of course that's controversial. When he tried to publish his material, he couldn't get a publisher anywhere. And what happened was, one publisher decided to buy his material for publishing, but they, they deceived him. They bought the material for publishing and bought the publishing rights and refused to publish it. So all that, he can't even publish it now because he breaks copyright. And if he, if he does, then he gets, he gets, uh, yeah, gets uh, they, they take him to court. He has a lot of information between Christianity and Krishna consciousness. It's amazing. I have some of his newsletters. He would, I would, we would sit with him for hours in New Vrindavan, and he would speak. Amazing, yeah. How much we know? We don't really. What 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 goes on in the world is the books that we have are very. I mean, there are many books, you know, just like the. the Aquarian Bible, the Aquarian, is it Aquarian Gospel, that speaks a lot about Christ. The Aquarian, and Prabhupada quotes that one, Aquarian Gospel. And there's many other books also that give more of the detailed information from scholars and researchers. <laughs> because uh, a particular religion wants to keep a certain image and so they don't want to bring in so much information from other sources. We do that also, too. <laughs> How much we do that, I don't know. But I don't think of very much, anyway. But a religion wants to make a certain presentation, and this is the image, like that. So a lot of a lot of documentations is not included in traditional religious societies <laughs> because it goes contrary to some of the things. <laughs> But Christianity spread around the world because the Christians were really re willing to, I mean, they were so dedicated to their tradition that they were willing, so many Christians gave their lives in order to preach Krishna consciousness. Really amazing. There's a book, if you can find it, called Foxes, F-O-X-E-X, F-O-X-E-S, it's the name of the author. His name is Fox. 
Book of Martyrs. It's called Book of Martyrs. And it's Book of Christian Martyrs that was published in 1886, I think, the book. And in that, it describes the lives of these different persons who gave their life to preach Christianity. That's why Christianity is so strong in the world today. Because when someone gives their life, then that spreads the movement fast. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, anybody. <laughs> so our movement is to be give our life in the form of preaching. That's that's it. Like that, we have to preach, <laughs> and we should not be afraid if they threaten us. We we have to preach. Preaching has to go on. It's Lord Chaitanya's order. Uh, Prithivitya Tiyachi Narayana Gram 